Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us give thanks for the newness of life we receive in baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life. Together with all creation, we depend on water for our very being. We offer gratitude for these, our waters, the Mississippi that unites us, the lakes that calm us, the streams that surround us, the pipes that carry water to our homes. We bless these gifts that they might nurture our lives. We steward these gifts that they might nurture the earth. Held in this promise, we give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life. We give you thanks, O God, for your salvation through the water. We remember your abundant grace and liberating power in deliverance from the flood, in passage through the reed sea, in water gushing from rocks in the wilderness. We hold to your word that teems with life-giving waters from the banks of the Jordan River to the river of life that flows from the cross. We enter into Jesus' death through these waters, cleansing us of our sins and raising us to new life. Held in this promise, we give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life. We give you thanks, O God, for the grace-filled community born in these baptismal waters, for the reconciling waters that make us one in you, for all our relatives in Christ, whom we have never seen, but to whom we are bound for the ways you are made known to us in community, alive for the sake of the world, for our baptismal identity that grounds us, sustains us, and calls us to be neighbor to one another in your great love. Held in this promise, we give you thanks, O oh God, for the waters of life. At the river we pray, pour upon us yet again the spirit of our baptism. Wash away our brokenness, immerse us in your love, and restore us to wholeness. You, O oh God, are the water we crave, the fountain of life, the cleansing spring, the well from which we drink and never thirst again. Amen.
The risen Christ be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, unite us with Christ and with each other in suffering and in joy that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to worship on this, the seventh Sunday in the season of Easter. We are so grateful for the wonderful ways our congregations and ministries have been gathering for worship online. This was a steep learning curve for many and a whole lot of work for most. And after preparing for today, the first online synod worship service, we couldn't agree more. Please join me in praising and thanking all your congregations, worship leaders, and staff. Our hope today and on the 4th of July weekend is to provide a worship service both to celebrate and strengthen our synod faith community and also to provide a small respite for congregational worship leaders. We are deeply grateful for the music in today's service songs from recordings of worship services at Central and Edina Community Lutheran, as well as Concordia College. What can I say? I got to sing in that choir 40 years ago. We hope you'll sing along and that you will be able to find the words in the bulletin. We continue worshiping together, for God has promised to meet us here. I'm Pastor John. I'm your kid sermon guy today. Say hi, Pastor John. Thank you. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, when I rode a bike this size, my best friend was Tony. He was such a good friend. We would do everything together. We would play cops and robbers. We would, when it rained, we'd go out to the gutter in the street and we'd get mud and sticks and leaves and make a dam be civil engineers it was fun we played baseball a lot of baseball baseball catch baseball mitt but we also rode our bikes we would ride them everywhere and we would take our old not very good baseball cards the ones that we didn't like and we'd take clothes pins and we'd put them on our bike So then they'd make a great whack, 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 whack sound when we'd bite. Yeah. So thinking about friends, when you have to stay at home, you can't often see your best friend. But I'm betting you still have a way to connect with them. So um, hopefully when we don't have to stay home so much, you can really see them and it'll seem like nothing has ever changed. Wouldn't that be great? Um, oh, what? Oh, oh yeah, Bible story. The Bible story today is Jesus praying a very long, beautiful prayer. And, oh, yeah. The first very cool thing about this prayer is that Jesus prays for you and me. Isn't that amazing? Jesus prays for you and me. The second cool thing thing oh second cool thing is that when we pray to jesus and when jesus prays for us we are connecting and we are spending time which means jesus is our friend that's a very cool thing and there's a third cool thing too oh yeah third cool thing is that we can connect with our friend jesus anytime we want as long as we pray, if we pray at night, during the day, anytime, anywhere, we can always be with our friend Jesus. Isn't that great? 
let's connect with Jesus right now. How about that? So, um, will you pray with me? Wait, wait. Can you get the big people in the room to join us too? Wake them up if you have to. All right. Say, repeat after me. Dear God, thanks for sending Jesus. Thanks for sending Jesus to be our friend. Help us to remember to pray for those who are sick, for those who are lonesome, for those who don't have a place to sleep at night. And thank you so much for sending Jesus to be our friend. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I am out of here. A reading from Acts. Today's reading is part of the introduction to the narrative of the outpouring of the Spirit on Pentecost. These verses tell of the risen Christ's conversation with the disciples, in which Christ promises that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes appeared beside them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. From the Psalms. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As spoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor.
Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace be unto you from our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. I am so grateful for this chance to share God's word with you. Thank you for being present for this first ever Synod-wide worship service online. How many times have you heard the phrase, a new normal? Though it clearly applies to life during a pandemic, it's a phrase that probably comes from the emotional work of grieving, grieving and healing after a loss. When someone you love has died, you give anything to go back to yesterday, but it's not possible after death. Five years ago, at our first counseling session after the son, uh, death of our son, our therapist said to my husband and me, the universe has shifted. You have a new identity, parents of a child who died. You may try to return to your former life, but it's not possible. Everything has changed. I think lots of us are feeling something like that today. The universe has shifted. We've encountered a new contagious virus to which no one has immunity. As I write this sermon, the virus has infected 4.7 million people across the globe, spread to 188 countries, and caused the deaths of over 315,000 people. Every day, it seems, brings new questions about how we're to live in this shifting universe. How much sunlight do I need to kill the germs on my mail? Do I have immunity if I've already had the virus? When can we gather for the funeral of someone who died from COVID? We are overwhelmed by the vast and ever-changing questions, exhausted by the endless and also ever-changing answers. So how do we cope? Do we have the courage and stamina and wisdom for this new normal. Well, scripture is filled with stories of change, times when God creates a new normal, creation out of chaos, freedom from slavery, a people where there once was no people. And most profoundly, the death and resurrection of Christ ushered in a new normal, a new era. The first disciples, however, had no experience with this new thing, Jesus raised, risen from the dead. 
It was as new to them as COVID-19 is new to us. And it's no wonder Jesus takes the whole chapter just to pray for them in this new normal. That's the whole of John chapter 17, a prayer the disciples gathered around Jesus who's praying that God would prepare them for this world about to turn. But the preparation isn't just about what happens to Jesus. It's also about what's going to happen to the disciples. It's about the outpouring of the Spirit, a mighty Spirit who will empower the disciples and then send them into the world to love this world as God loves it. So the world has turned. God's, God's resolve to love and heal this world never changes. It's the reason Jesus was sent into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. Indeed, in John's gospel, sent one is the most common title Jesus uses to describe himself. And now, that's what he calls the disciples. Just a few verses later in this chapter, Jesus says, As God has sent me into the world, so I am sending you into the world. In our lesson from Acts, Jesus says, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It's hard to be sent further than to the ends of the earth. Those united with this crucified and risen Christ in baptism are now also sent ones. We know the verse by heart, God so loved the world that God gave God's only son. Now out of God's love for the world, the disciples, including you and me, are sent into the world. That's also part of the new normal called Easter. And yes, in the midst of a global pandemic, how does one actually live as someone sent out to serve? Most of us have spent the last two months staying in, inside our homes, often overwhelmed with tasks like doing our jobs or trying to keep our jobs or trying to replace a paycheck, buying groceries, caring for children, caring for elders. And now that we might be able to take just a breath, we ask what it would actually look like to be the sent ones out in the world to live and share God's resurrection power and love. In lots of ways, technology makes things easier. We can actually see each other on FaceTime and Zoom. We can keep in touch without actually touching. During the flu pandemic of 1918, it was much harder to care for others without coming quite close to them. No WhatsApp or Marco Polo, no bite squad to send that hot covered dish. But now we can share food with the hungry and water, with the thirsty, with funds given at the click of a mouse or the opening of our Venmo account. Maybe those of us listening today whose salaries and pensions are intact are called to think about stretching, giving an extra percent or more to ELCA World Hunger, our companion church in Nigeria, our mission congregations in our own synod. Notice I said extra percent there beyond what we've already committed to our congregation. For many living on the edge of poverty, the pandemic is as much about getting food, clean water, and a roof over one's head. In Lagos, Nigeria, the largest city in all of Africa, three quarters of the 26 million people live in one of the city's crowded shanty towns, many living hand to mouth, working in the informal sector where there isn't a safety net, no PPP, no CARES Act. And with quarantine, even the day laborer income disappears. The Synod, through the Resurrection Fund, was able to send $35,000 from the tithe portion to our companion Synod Church 
in Nigeria. What new generosity might God be calling you and me to consider? Just yesterday I heard the phrase, the wise are always learning new things and the generous are always, always finding new ways to give more. We can lean into God's call to serve. We can be creative in sharing God's love, even while wearing protective masks. Yes, it's a new normal. Oh, many days we want the old normal. And yet, do we just want the old normal as it was? COVID-19 has revealed some things about our society, particularly the systems that leave some more vulnerable than others. Could it be that as we learn about the injustices exposed by the effects of this virus, we renew our commitment to the holy work of building new structures of justice and equity. The human family, indeed the whole creation, is knit together, knit so tightly that what happens in one part of the world happens to all of us. How might we today be learning that access to health care is vital to the well-being of the whole human family? How might we be learning today that investment in quality education for everyone is vital to raising up the leaders and scientists and caregivers with the wisdom to guide us in the next crisis and with the courage to fight for justice and the healing of this planet. What might we learn in this chapter of world history? How might you and I be changed? Certainly, the disciples were surprised when Jesus called them sent ones, witnesses to the ends of the earth, called like Jesus to be sent, sharing the love of God. Undoubtedly, they were surprised even more when the tongues of fire appeared to empower them. But that's a story for next week. What might be the biggest surprise of the 17th chapter of John is how Jesus about the community of those disciples, the beloved people of God. Oh, the Gospel of John talks a whole lot about community. And mostly John talks about how we abide with one another just as closely as Christ abides with God. We are one with each other as Jesus and God are one. That is an image with great power and well, a pretty high bar for us, one with Christians as Jesus is one with God. And to make things harder, Jesus sends the beloved community into the world to witness to God's love as Jesus has. And we ask, how can we be in the world but not of it? How can we engage the culture while living the countercultural narrative of God's unconditional love and welcome? That may be one of the great tensions the church faces. How does the church risk its life for the world and also tend the beloved community? How do communities care for each other while stretching outward, giving themselves away in radical love, justice, and service? In a promise in this text, one that hasn't ever hit me quite in the same way before, Jesus gives us hope for this very journey. <clears throat> yes, Jesus prays that we will be one, even as Jesus and God are one. But later, Jesus also prays for something even more radical, that the beloved community will be in us, meaning in God and Jesus. Think of that. What does it mean for Jesus to say that we, you and I, God's children, become a new community, and this household includes the very triune God. It's given me a whole new picture of the church. We stand together, hands clasped. Now, this is not an image for today during a pandemic, but 
in the near future. We stand, this is the image, we stand in a circle around a campfire maybe, around the baptismal font, around the community, communion table, around the bed of the sick who are dying. We stand hand joined. <clears throat> and there in this circle, forever and always in this circle, stands Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God, the mother and father of us all right there. You see, the circle of the beloved community is never without the presence of the living God. Yes, our communities of faith can only grasp hands virtually these days, but God is amazingly good at crossing barriers. God is present with you. Wherever you are right now, listen to this word. God is there with you. And God holds you and holds all of us in a circle of love that extends beyond time and space, that includes those who've gone before and those yet to come, that includes the loved one you have made, you may have lost to COVID, and includes our son, John Amos. We, dearly beloved, join hands in a circle that includes our triune God. And the very presence of God with us this God who raised Jesus from the dead, who pours out the Holy Spirit, this God will guide and bless and encourage us as we seek to be sent one, to love this beautiful and broken world with all the gifts and all the love we have to give. Amen. steps in days gone by. You gave me rest, my quiet springs, and filled my soul with peace your loving presence brings. Let me back home with tears.
tears of joy, I'll find my peace, trusting that in your mercy you have sheltered me. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Faithful God, we pray for your church. As your people worship today, gathered in thousands of separate homes, grant us the gift of your peace. Give strength and wisdom to the leaders of our congregations and communities of faith. As Christians around the globe are united in their suffering through the coronavirus, so unite us also in the hope of life in the risen Christ. God, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our, prayer. our prayer. Creating God, we pray for the world you have made. As human society is quieted by sickness, give your plants and animals, lands and seas, a time to renew and replenish themselves. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of justice, we pray for the nations. Bless the efforts of the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization. Bring an end to violence between nations, across borders, within countries, and inside homes. Uphold the governors of our land. Give all civic leaders persistence in facing this pandemic. Attention to those in need, in wisdom in proceeding into an unknown future. God, in your mercy, hear, hear, hear our, our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need. Comfort the bereaved, accompany the sick, especially the multitude who have contracted the coronavirus and those who remember in our hearts. Visit the homes of all who are isolated and hold the lonely and fearful in your arms. Grant your peace to the millions of unemployed. Give them food for today and hope for tomorrow. Help us find a home for refugees. Support medical care workers in their endless tasks of attending to the pandemic patients. Provide needed medical supplies for hospitals. God in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, we pray for children and youth. Shelter them from all sickness. Keep homebound children safe from hunger and abuse. Nurture teenagers with a vision of life beyond this pandemic. Give them assurance as they are separated physically from friends and mentors. We pray especially for all who are graduating this spring. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Eternal God, we praise you for the lives of all who have died in faith. This Memorial Day, we especially remember those who risked their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never failing care. God, in your mercy. Hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for ourselves. Renew our spirits by the power of the risen Christ. 
sustained by the promise of healing and resurrection, free us from the fear of death and bring us at our end with all the saints into the joy of your presence. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your peace, which passes human understanding, we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Now let us join together in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. You're not alone. You're not alone. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Keep moving on. Keep moving on. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love Put one foot in front of the other And lead with love I know you're scared I know you're scared And I'm scared too And I'm scared too But here I am But here I am Right next to you Right next to you You gotta put one foot in front of the other And lead with love Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always and also with you. Go in peace. Christ is risen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>